Hey everybody, uh, today I'm going to be taking a look at Blood and Plunder. This is something we might call a unboxing if there was much to actually un unbox. Uh, it could be an unfolding, an, an opening. <laughs> but actually there is more to look at than just the book. I, I got my Kickstarter today, which includes the rule book, which you see here, and some miniatures and a ship. And although I've had some opportunity to look this stuff over, I haven't had a complete opportunity to look it over. So we're going to kind of do that together. Uh, and if you aren't familiar with Blood and Plunder, Blood and Plunder is a miniatures game of semi-historically accurate pirates in the 17th century. So you can expect to see piratey goodness in here. So this has got... Uh, an artillery rules clarification, which, you know, you might call uh, uh, an errata, but I guess it's just trying to make things clear. This is your QRS, which is always nice when it is included with the rules and not something you necessarily have to download. So that's kind of cool. And then we have the book itself. And it is full of pretty, pretty pictures of painted pirates. Um, I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because uh, I will be doing a review of the rules themselves in the future. What you should know about them is that it is um, kind of a small unit battle game. Uh, in watching games of it played online, I get the impression that it's sort of a... Think of it like uh, 40k in a smaller smaller scale. Like your 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 armies aren't going to be as big, but in addition to infantry combat, it also includes uh, some naval combat. So you can see there's stats for a brigantine, which is I think the ship that I got. I think I got a brigantine. Um, so rather than it just being dudes against dudes it can be dudes and ships against other dudes in other ships so this makes me happy uh as you can see the book looks really really nice it is very well done i really like the binding it all opens up nicely and lays flat and the photographs are great it's interesting the um <clears throat> if you look at let's see if we can look closer if you look closely at the painting style of these, um, they are what I would call um, well-done tabletop-ready minis. Um, in most cases, they look like they might have been dipped, but it, or if nothing else, they've at least been given that really high contrast, very blocky uh, uh, color style that is more often seen in historical games than in fantasy and science fiction games. Fantasy and science fiction gamers tend to put um, more emphasis on the blending of colors and such. And the war gamers usually like to make them look good from a distance. And that's kind of how these are. But they still look really good. I'm not, I'm not trying to detract from the painting style of these. But I'm also excited to see what my own painting style will look like on these minis. So yeah, so what I got is, well actually, why don't I go grab my minis? Because this is the book, you've seen the book. It looks really pretty, really well laid out. Haven't had a chance to read it, so I can't really tell you much about that. Oh, hey, here's some, here's some naval related rules. Let me grab some minis and then we can talk more about them. I'm going to start with the fun stuff. This is my ship. And actually, let me look at my invoice so I can tell you what ship I got. This is the Brigantine. I was correct. Uh, it comes with dowels for your masts. I've got a whole load of cannon. Oops. Oh, and rigging. I 
actually give you some line for rigging. So that's kind of awesome. I think sales are going to be interesting. Um, and trying to make those look good will be... What is that? Is that... I'm not sure what that is. Let's just dump stuff out. That's the best way to do this. So various bits of hardware. There's our... There's our anchor. And mini cannon. So many things. Where's a cannon? I can put on a thing. Oh, look at that. That is so cool. So excited. You can expect to see a work in progress series on this. I'm, I'm, I've been so excited about this game um, ever since I put money down. Ooh, these are little tiny swivel guns. Uh, ever since I put money down for the Kickstarter, I've been dying to get it. And really, <clears throat> everything about this Kickstarter has gone incredibly smoothly. Uh, it's coming out, like, I got this today, literally today. So today is the 6th of January. Uh, they had... Uh, said that it would be available in December, and they did start shipping in December, so uh, they've met that. Uh, they met that goal of the Kickstarter. And as I look at the various elements of the ship, and you see now I'm kind of sorry that I put all this stuff in here. Dump it out. There we go. Uh, and look at the casting. This is beautiful. I don't see any bubbles. Nope, oh, I see some on the underside where you don't see them, which is exactly where you want to see them. Uh, yeah, this is uh, an incredibly clean casting. Now, I I, I don't want to... Uh, uh, I don't want to make it seem like it's impossible for them to do a bad casting because it is certainly possible. This is, uh, we're still early days on this mold, clearly. So the mold has not taken too many hits. Um, I feel like I must have gotten something fresh from this mold because this is just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. There's nothing wrong here. There's nothing to fix. This is prime and go or wash and prime and go. And so, yeah, that's great. And then looking at the cannon, oh, there's a little shorty. This is for these uh, these areas here. Anyway, um, the casting looks reasonable. It doesn't look perfect, but it looks reasonable. It doesn't look like uh, anything unexpected, um, good or bad. There's some mold lines, which you would expect to see on metal pieces like this. Um, but they are not pronounced. Yeah, this stuff all looks all looks really good. Not great, really good. Yeah, so happy with that. This is, I'm not sure where this goes. This is like some sort of lantern. It must hang off the back, I'll bet. I don't know. My, my knowledge of ships is not huge. I've done a little bit of naval gaming, but uh, naval-related things are not my not my forte. I have a friend that I can ask about that kind of stuff because he knows all this stuff a lot more than I do. Yep, just gonna shove this aside because <laughs> it's gonna take too long to put all that back in that tiny little bag. Let's look at some other things. So these were uh, the bonus minis. And that would include, sorry about the bouncy camera, Spanish Commander Alternate Pose, Rivero de Pardal Alternate Pose, uh, Henry Morgan Alternate Pose, and Henry Morgan Legendary Figure. Uh, let's, let's zoom in here a little bit. Okay. These are all the cool commandery guys. Now, 
one thing, if you're not familiar with doing metal, and that's it seems weird of me to even be able to say that, oh, if you're not familiar with doing metal minis, because when I was a lad, metal minis was all we had. They didn't make any cool plastic models. And actually, if, if, you, if you did find plastic models, they were super shitty. Um, and they were soft, and they wouldn't hold paint. And even if they did hold paint, the first time you bent them, because they would bend really easily, the paint would come right off. Sorry, I'm not actually going to clean this up. There was just a little bit of flash there that bugged me, and I wanted to move it. So one of the things you're going to have to do uh, with metal minis is clean up flash. Uh, clean the seams as you would with a plastic mini. But you also need to straighten pieces. Look at that sword. That's not supposed to be like that. Now, I have played with a couple of these minis already, so I know this is really particularly bad. Um, it's always best to sort of get a look at how it bends and try to bend it back as broadly as possible. Like, don't grab from here and try and bend because then you're just going to bend that little bit there. I like to... Oh, and I can bend from there. You know, see, provide a little backstop for it. You can even, uh, you know, set something down that's straight and bend against it. You can see that it still kind of goes off to the side there. So I'm gonna. Oh, and we can just keep going with this, but. Just something to keep in mind, and you want to do a little bit at a time, and if it looks like it's going wrong, then back up, and you could even, if you had a, um, if you have a pair of pliers that has a flat um, grip, and it doesn't have the toothed grip like this, you know, then you can kind of grab and use it to flatten. I would not do that with this one, but this is just to give you an idea. Anyway, uh, in taking a look at these, again, the casting looks good. Like, actually, this one looks particularly good. A little bit of flash, but the mold lines are very faint, very easy to clean, very easy to follow, too, because, you know, when you see a guy that's... that's uh, pose like that, you just know that that line just follows around that outer edge there. And so you just go looking for it. This guy's got a great pose. And I actually think he has trained, straightened his gun earlier and it never bent back. The nice thing about this, uh, the metal that they're cast in, it seems to have a reasonable amount of lead to it. Um, the lead-free pewters that you sometimes get are much harder to work with and can be very brittle. So especially when you had somebody with a sword bent like that, uh, you're as likely to break it as repair it. Uh, that guy looks cool. The other interesting thing about these is they all are mounted on... You know, they have their sort of own integral basing, which has uh, wooden planking, which looks really nice. It also looks nice in the photographs uh, in the book. The only thing that bugs me about that at all is that I know, well, for one thing, it's so shallow. I, I normally like to handle my minis from the bases, and these are so shallow, it's really hard to pick them up by the base, which means that I'd want to be picking them up from the figure, which with metal models can be problematic because the, uh, the paint comes off easier from metal, even if it's well primed. It comes off easier from metal than it does on plastic. So um, it makes me think that maybe I want to provide alternate basing for these guys as well but then they're going to be super tall and I don't necessarily want to do that. So I may end up just leaving them. So let me set these guys off to the side and then we'll go look at our rank and file minis. So I got English Buccaneers. 
my son got uh, Spanish, but I can't remember. There was a couple of options for Spanish, and uh, I can't recall which ones he got. These are these are really cool. Okay, we found one where the casting isn't quite as nice. Um, there's a lot of crazy flashing there. This will clean up fine, but it just kind of bothers me. Actually, what's nice about this piece is it's holding the sword straight. I have yet to see anything that's super problematic. I've not seen any miscasts or, um, you know, big hunks of metal hanging off of a place where you know that the, uh, the mold has broken, which sometimes with brand new companies, you'll see that kind of stuff because they, they have a mold maker who isn't quite, doesn't quite know what to do, but whoever's casting these knows what they're about. Ah, these are so nice. I'm so looking forward to these. I don't know if these were, I think these were, the, had uh, 3D printed masters. Fairly certain that's true, but they don't look it. Um, normally with the uh, uh, 3D designed models, the this kind of detailing is super shallow and doesn't look that great, but these all look fantastic. Oh, there's a little bit of pitting in here. Nothing serious. Sometimes you can get that with um, if, if the uh, temperature of your metal was wrong when you were casting. I can't remember if it's too hot or too cold. I, I've actually done a little bit of casting way back in the 90s. Uh, I worked for Leading Edge Games who did a line of uh, Aliens miniatures. If for those of you old enough to remember. Uh, so I did a little casting and I learned a little bit about it, but I was in no way a uh, professional caster. Again, a little bit of... a little bit of flashing. Gosh, these all look great. And I'm just trying to get a random sampling here so that, you know, I can get a sense of what they're all like. And my sense is that they're pretty good. So yeah, so miniatures wise, I think um, I think I'm gonna be really happy with these. Uh, let me just say really quickly that if you also participated in this Kickstarter and are looking for somebody to paint your guys for you, you should put me on that list because uh, I would love to do more of these, not just mine, but other people's. But hey, you know what? Let's take a look at some of the ancillary things that came with the Kickstarter. This is pretty, oh, let's zoom out a little bit here. These are the dice bags. <laughs> and at first glance, like, oh, these are kind of cheesy, but you know what? They kind of fit well They in the, uh, in the theme. They're pretty cool, you know, like rugged burlap. I kind of like it. Let me see. Let me get them open here. These are the D10s. My biggest problem with when I saw these in the Kickstarter was that they wouldn't be easy to read. And they're not particularly bad. Uh, but they're not super legible either. But I like them, and they seem like they would be usable. <laughs> and I, I actually think I'm going to continue using these dice bags too, because that's fun. All right. And these are the marker dice, I think. I can't recall. I think you use some of them to, well, these are, you know, so that you can mark them as to what their current state is, your unit's current state is, and I'm not sure what the other ones are for, but 
these these all look very clear like I can see what the difference is between the various bits of icon pictures on the dice they all look fine that's cool very happy with those oh managed to get them all in great and then I got unit cards and I got these coins which I can't remember I know that there's a uh, they're markers for a function in the game and I think there's a uh, something called fortune in the game and I think that's, that's what these are used for I can't remember for sure but they, these are nice they're really cool even if they had no function in the game I would find one for them uh, and these are just your various units in the game there's my sea dogs and this is, uh, let me see. Oh, this is this is like a, an entire starting force that tells you what what goes in it. And you got an untested captain, an experienced captain, a seasoned captain, and then some named guys: uh, Barnard Spydrake and Robert Surly. And there's uh, my forlorn hope and my freebooters. They've got some special rules on the back. And these are really nice cards. These are really, really well done. Let me see what else I got. Oh, I got my activation card deck, which is essentially just a uh, standard deck of cards with special stuff printed on them. You don't need... You don't need the activation deck, but you do need a deck of cards to do activation, if that makes sense to you. So I think there's a chart that tells you uh, what the various cards mean without having to have these cards that tell you on them, but this just makes it a lot easier to do. And these are my special English cards. So that's really nice. Very well done. Quality looks good. So, uh, all I gotta say is I am just super happy with everything that came with this Kickstarter. Happy with the fact that it came when it did. Uh, if it wasn't for the fact that I was deeply involved in a paying clients uh, uh, project right now, I would be cleaning minis and prepping the ship to go right at this very moment. But since I do have that other project to do, that's what I'm going to go work on. But in the very, very near future, I will be doing a work in progress uh, series where I cover this project from front to back. Everything. Uh, the ship, the minis, everything. So, something to look forward to. That's going to do it for now, and I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.